It's a damn shame What the world's gotten to For people like me People like you Wish I could just wake up And it not be true But it is Oh it is Living in the new world With an whole soul Good morning, everyone. Lots going on as usual. Today is September 25th, 2023. We survived 923. Yay. I mean, great, right? I didn't even see any terrible things that happened. So we've got a few more days for the month, and I'm sure that's going to be smooth sailing. I mean, what else could happen? (laughs) Holy smoke, there's a lot going on, right? As usual, the Canadian government invited a World War II Waffen SS Nazi and had a standing ovation for him in the House of Commons. Like everybody stood and everybody clapped, including Pierre Polyev and a whole bunch of other people. And now they're claiming that we didn't know. We didn't know that he was a, a, a Nazi. We didn't know. How could we possibly know? I'll show you that at least some people got his name ahead of time. So they could have done due diligence. They, th- I think that it's proof that they did know. I'll further show you that Karina Gould put out a, a tweet that said that the government didn't know that this person was coming. The Speaker of the House invited him. It was the Speaker's fault. Obviously, the government's not at fault here. It was just this one rogue MP speaker who did this, that terrible guy, him. And actually, that's not true because this guy, this Nazi who everybody stood up and clapped for in the House of Commons the other day, um, he met with Zelensky and Trudeau. And that doesn't happen unless you get vetting. That doesn't happen unless people look into who you are and know who you are. So it seems like there's one story that they want to spin and one story of reality. I think they did this and they didn't want to get caught or they thought they wouldn't get caught or if they did get caught, they could spin it any way they wanted to and and really nobody's paying attention anyway. So they found out people were paying attention. It's very interesting. When they caught, caught, they forced the speaker to apologize and coordinated the whole thing. Um, and, and then say that he coordinated the whole thing. And I'm telling you, there's no way the speaker coordinated the whole thing. I'll show you the moment when he does the math in his head after like on the floor reading live the introduction of this guy, the prepared statement that he has not read before. And he does the math in his head. I'll show it to you. And he he knows this guy is was fighting against Canada at that point in time. Huh. Anyway, he knew. And now he's being thrown under the bus for it, which is very interesting. And now they're asking the public not to politicize this very political gaffe by the in-charge party who celebrated a Nazi while accusing everybody else of being white supremacists and Nazis. So, I mean, they have a term for that in Germany. I think it's called Schaden... Oh, no. I can't remember how to say it. I went to dictionary.com. Schadenfreude. That's what it says. Schadenfreude. There you go. See? Bam. So... That's, that's what it is. Okay. Um, let's, <laughs> there's lots to get to. Let's get started. Uh, first, first, we have to start obviously with the Nazis in the House of Commons being applauded by all of our government, all of our government, which is just wild. Um, here is Maxime Bernier. He says, when one provocateur with a Nazi flag appeared at the Freedom Convoy, the lying mainstream media used this as proof that the protesters were white supremacists and extremists. Are they going to do the same with the liberal government that invited an actual Nazi in parliament? And you see this this uh, flag here. And I'm sure there was a Confederate flag too, but I remember this, but it looked, it, this one seemed obviously staged. And I think it's funny, is the F. Trudeau flag part of this contingent? I guess so. I thought maybe they were trying to use the F. Trudeau flag to cover the Nazi flag, which I thought was kind of funny. Anyway, here's the Toronto Sun and their headline says, did not see that coming. Ha, which I mean, everybody's been saying, right? It is pretty funny. And it says, turns out Ukrainian World War II vets gave given standing ovation in parliament, fought for Hitler. Huh. (laughs) Warmington on Trudeau's who latest humiliation, right? And I mean, oh man, if only we could go back to those days when he was just accusing the Indian government of being murderers, right? <laughs> like Last week was so le- so much less complicated. I'll take you back in time as well to February 24th of this year after Christine Anderson came to Canada because she likes to speak about freedom and Canadians like to speak about freedom. And it was the, the anniversary of the convoy and so on and so forth. So she was here to celebrate and, and to meet with some people. And Karina Gould took offense to this. And she said earlier this week, conservative MP Leslie Lewis, Colin Carey and Dean Allison met with Christine Anderson, a member of the dangerous far right German AFD party. I mean, and it's irony there. Her government is the one setting up standing ovations for former Waffen SS Nazis, right? Like crazy town, right? And then she says, 
Right, well, here's the picture of her holding hands with the SS Nazi, right? And Norman Levine says, I remember when Karina Gould, or I remember Karina Gould accusing Melissa Lanceman of hanging out with Nazis. What's the German word? Ah, she, oh no, I, I can't remember how to say it. Hold on a second. Here it is. Schadenfreude. Right. So, um, <laughs> Harrison Faulkner says, Liberal House Leader Karina Gould and Canada's Speaker of the House, House Anthony Rota, holding hands with Waffen SS Nazi uh, Hunka or Yuslav Hunka. Interesting stuff happening, right? Turns and turns and turns. Karina Gould is responding to Melissa Lanceman, and this is now September 24th. Fast forward. Um, Melissa Lanceman says, The reports of this individual's history is very troubling. The Liberal government should explain why he was invited and honored. Hashtag Canada Poly. Zelensky joins Canadian ovation for veterans who fought with Nazis, the forward. And Karina Gould says, The speaker has made it clear that he was responsible for inviting this individual to the House. I'll show you his his comment in a minute or his, his apology because it's not much of an apology, but I wanted to show you this first. The government played no role. It did not know he would be there. The prime minister did not meet him. I'm deeply troubled that this happened. I urge MPs to avoid politicizing this incident. Here is uh, the family of the Nazi guy. And she says, Dedo, which means grandfather, is waiting in the reception hall for Trudeau and Zelensky. So he didn't, he didn't meet them. Hey, here's some evidence that you're lying, Karina. Right? I mean, it's really, really interesting. So very, very um, troubling that they will tell a lie so freely. Jenny says, everyone attending the speech would have been vetted by the government, PCO, GAC, for insiders, even more so for people like Hunka invited to a private reception with Trudeau and Zelensky. If the liberal government says differently, they're lying and throwing Anthony Rota under the bus at the same time. That's exactly what is happening. Joe Warmington is reporting the family sharing these images of Hunka waiting for um, Tr Zelensky and Trudeau. So Jorzlav Hunka being invited to the House of Commons with a background of fighting with a unit connected to the Nazis is a horrible blunder that won't soon be forgotten. Oh, oh, contraire. Can you name two scandals ago, Joe? Uh, China, Chinese interference, Indian interference. Oh, what's the third one? SNC-Lavalin. <laughs> That's too far back. Um, honestly, it's there's a bevy. It's like he's going for a, a full quiver, right? A baker's dozen. How many scandals do you need before you throw people out bodily, right? Like cheapers, creepers. Let's all clap for this Nazi. Nobody's upset. People are actually, there are governments asking for apologies. So there is something happening. So, <laughs> I mean, embarrassing Canada on the world stage, that's not so good. But maybe, maybe that will move Trudeau out of the leadership position a little bit, maybe. Dan McTeague is responding to Rex Glacier. He says, uh, let's hope they're asking why. And he says, the PMO protocol office is always on alert for these things. I'm not buying the lone wolf angle Rhoda is peddling. So why did, why did Rhoda bring this guy. Um, and they're saying that it was all Anthony Rhoda's fault. And, and actually, this person says, um, they absolutely knew who he was read this article from 2018. So in 2018, here's, here's a quick story, just, just to give you an idea. Actually, I think this was 2017, maybe. Oh, no, it was 2018. Okay. Um, what happened was, there was a situation where the Russians were pointing out that Canada had monuments to SS people and prominent Nazis, okay? And, in, and that was true. That, that was absolutely true. They were accurate in their criticism. And so they were, they were doing it to embarrass, they were saying it to embarrass Canada. Or maybe they were just saying, hey, did you know that you have these monuments to Nazis? Either one. The response was not, oh no, we have to get rid of these Nazi monuments. No, no, no. The response was, we have to lie to people and tell them that this is dis disinformation. Honestly, this is the Ottawa Citizen publishing this. And it says, contrast how the United States responded to how the Canadian government handled a related issue last year when the Russian embassy in Ottawa tweeted out, quote, there are monuments to Nazi collaborators in Canada and nobody's doing anything about it in 2018. And they started doing something about it in 2018. You know what they did? They lied to you about it. Um, <laughs> a monument in Oakville commemorates those who served with the 14th SS Galeazin. Division. I totally flubbed that. That's fine. Um, another monument in Edmonton honors Roman 
somebody else starts with an S, uh, the leader of the Ukrainian insurgent army. As my post media colleague Marie Danielle Smith discovered, the Russian tweet sent bureaucrats at Global Affairs Canada into overdrive as they tried to defend the SS unit and Ukrainian Nazi collaborators. Documents she received through the Access to Information Law show government officials were under a lot of pressure from the center, the Privy Council office, and the Prime Minister's office to counter the news about the monuments to Nazi collaborators. The bureaucrats came up with a strategy. They would label the tweets as disinformation. And they came up with a plan to spread the word to the news media as part of their effort to defend Ukraine's Nazi collaborators. So not, we have to get rid of these monuments. They were right and we were wrong. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we have these Nazi monuments. No, no, no. Leave the Nazi monuments. Call them liars. Smear them in the press. Ruin their reputations. Okay. (laughs) Sounds good. So for having pictures with Nazis, for giving um, rounds of applause to an SS Nazi, what are the consequences, right? Here is um, Jen O'Connell, right? She's an MP and, and she's wondering, what are the consequences for this egregious act? I'm just curious if she thinks there should be consequences or, uh, or retromand for members of this house who meet with known Nazis who <clears throat> spread uh, misinformation, disinformation, glorify the Holocaust. Uh, I'm just curious if she's talking about online hate and privacy of Canadians and regulation. Does she condemn her actions by meeting with a known Nazi uh, in this country who spout anti-Muslim rhetoric? I'm just curious. Of course, that wasn't about this incident. That was about Christine Anderson meeting with some conservative MPs and she was talking to Leslie Lewis and she was being rude and condescending on purpose, right? Here's the amazing Zoltan. He says, the liberal NDP socialist coalition tracked down one of the few remaining surviving Nazi veterans of World War II, brought him to the House of Commons and gave him a standing ovation. The irony in inconvenience incompetence is astounding they should declare the emergencies act on themselves at this point in time and we'll watch this this is just a a grab bag of things that they said other people were doing which they themselves have now engaged in for real other people were doing and and they used these things as smears these people were not nazis these people were not white supremacists or right wing or any any of the other smears they let lodged towards these people at all and but these MPs, these people who clapped for this SS Nazi, they seem to uh, be exactly what they accuse everybody else of. Here's just a grab bag of things they've said in the last, I don't know, year or so. I'm compassionate to the Jewish people who saw swastika and, and Nazi flags flying. The flying of Confederate flags, the demonstration of swastikas on our Parliament Hill. They don't deserve to be confronted with the inherent violence of a swastika. Speaker, I am not interested in speaking to somebody who waves a swastika. Uh, People that are, uh, you know, uh, waving flags that have swastikas drawn on them. What have we seen? We've seen swastikas. Well, a swastika is obviously a symbol of the Third Reich. I also saw a much very sinister crowd. Uh, We saw Confederate flags. We saw swastikas. Uh, We've seen businesses, windows shattered individuals who are flying pride flags in Ottawa being terrorized. But but we see, for example, swastikas. How do I explain to my children that people are wearing the yellow star, that people are flying the swastika? Waving swastikas and wearing yellow stars and having the nerve to compare your situation to Jews who are murdered in the Holocaust is not part of a normal, peaceful protest. Huh, right? Not pro- shouldn't be in the House of Commons, guys. Interesting. Here's CBC News. Trudeau accuses conservative MPs of standing with people who wave swastikas, right? So they're trying to make political hay out of this. Maxime Bernier says, we can't allow Nazi sympathizers to, auto- to occupy Ottawa. They should be kicked out of town and their bank accounts frozen. I think that's tongue in cheek, but he's got a picture of Zelensky and Trudeau and Freeland um, and Zelensky's wife. Zelensky's wife. Probably or his wife. Um, Rex Glazier is responding to the Globe and Mail. The Globe and Mail says, Speaker apologizes after MPs honor man who fought with Nazis, who fought with the Nazi unit, says the Globe and Mail. And Rex says, Trudeau's media friends stayed up late last night whitewashing this Nazi man who fought with a Nazi unit equals Ukrainian man volunteered to serve with Nazi Waffen-SS, the most notorious and vile forces in the history of the Second World War. 
yeah, so they were they were like not nice guys. Joe Warmington says Canada's Speaker of the House will issue a statement today concerning embarrassing blunder of inviting a former member of a, a Ukrainian military division connected to the Nazi Party for Zelensky's visit with Justin Trudeau Friday. Jewish groups want an apology. Stay tuned. So they get an apology, kind of. But I wanted to show you. This tells me that Anthony Rota did not. QB this whole thing. He is not the guy who set this whole thing in motion. He wasn't like, you know what? Hey, hunka, get over here and like, let's see you in the in the gallery. I'm going to single you out. He is reading a prepared statement that he did not write. Pay attention. And then he does some quick math in his head as he's reading it and realizes that at the time, if he was fighting for uh, fighting for Ukraine against Russia, he was fighting for the Nazis, right? He was fighting for Hitler. So here we go. We have here in the chamber today Ukrainian Canadians, Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops. Yep, he definitely quarterbacked this whole thing. Definitely knew exactly who he was introducing against the Russians. Wait, weren't we allies in the Second World War? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we sure were. Mm -hmm. Here's the Speaker of the House official Twitter statement. It says on September 22nd in the House of Commons, I recognized an individual in the gallery. I regret my decision to do so and accept full responsibility for my actions. Read my statement here. And Andrew Coyne likes the statement. He says that's what I'm. That's what taking responsibility looks like. Sincere, unequivocal, unblinking. He screwed up. People do. But there's a, there's a problem. There's an interesting issue with this. Wait a minute, says Don Wilson, and he's a lawyer because it says LLB. Don says, wait a minute, there's a material discrepancy in the respective statements from the Speaker's office and the PMO. So the PMO also released a statement after the Speaker released a statement. In Speaker Rhoda's statement, he only takes responsibility for recognizing an individual in the gallery and making certain remarks. He says nothing about inviting this person. The PMO statement says the Speaker of the House has apologized and accepted full responsibility for issuing the invitation. The PMO's press secretary has twice reposted the claim of Karina Gould, MP, that the Speaker has now made it clear that he was responsible for inviting this individual to the House, except that is not true. The speaker has made no such apology, nor did he take responsibility for any such action. Read the statements for yourself. And so you can read all that, but I've, I've, already, um, I've already kind of shown you. Uh, but here's, I'll, I'll read the full statement from Rhoda. This is his statement on September 22nd, 2023. And he says on Friday, September, or he, the statement is dated September 24th, about September 22nd. On Friday, September 22nd, in my remarks following the address of, president of, Ukra of the president of Ukraine, I recognized an individual in the gallery. I have subsequently become aware of more information, which causes me to regret my decision to do so. I wish to make clear that no one, including fellow parliamentarians and the Ukraine delegation, Delegation, delegation was aware of my intention or of my remarks before I delivered them. This initiative was entirely my own, the individual in question being from my writing and having been brought to my attention. I particularly want to extend my deepest apologies to Jewish communities in Canada and around the world. I accept full responsibility for my actions. Okay, and so that's, I mean, that's interesting. Um, do you believe that all of that is true, that the Speaker wrote a quarterback this whole thing and didn't let anybody know and they didn't vet him and Trudeau didn't meet with him. Or maybe Trudeau did meet with him and they didn't vet him. Nobody knew. Come on. If nobody knew, I, I think that's a bridge too far. I can't believe that nobody would know uh, even having Zelensky and Trudeau meet with him. Um, and I believe that the image of him waiting for Trudeau and Zelensky posted by his family is proof positive that he did in fact meet with the leader of the leadership of the country, right? So I think that that is, needs to be taken considered seriously anyway. Here's the statement for, from the PMO. The independent speaker of the house, the independent speaker of the house, has he been kicked out of caucus? Oh, I guess he is independent by definition, right? He has to be independent. Um, anyway, the independent speaker of the house has apologized and accepted full responsibility for issuing the invitation and, f and for the recognition in parliament, this was the right thing to do. No advance notice was provided to the prime minister's office, nor the Ukrainian delegation about the invitation or the recognition. Parliament and the speaker's office is independent from the prime minister and the prime minister's office. The speaker had his own allotment of guests seating at Friday's address, which were determined by the Speaker in his office alone. Canada will continue to stand for a free Ukraine, and and we were proud to host President Zelensky and reaffirm our support for Ukraine, right? Blah, blah, blah. Um, wild stuff. I, 
I still don't think, despite Rhoda's statement of this person being from his his uh, writing and it was his initiative and his alone, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't think I believe that. I don't. I think that there was a lot more to that story. Um, but that's just a gut feeling. Who knows, who knows the reality? And especially in modern Canada, right? Rachel says the prime minister's office on this and uh, says the independent speaker of the house has apologized and accepted full responsibility for issuing the invitation and for the recognition in parliament. This was the right thing to do. PMO Ukraine delegation had no advance notice. Speaker had own allotment of seats. So quite convenient. Ezra says, if you're a Canadian who's outraged and humiliated that our speaker of the house, Anthony Rota, invited, vetted, introduced, championed, and cheered a Nazi SS officer, then signed this petition to have him fired. He has shown himself unworthy of the office. They're always asking for petitions and stuff. Like they're a news agency, right? Like seems weird. Um, Dr. Bianca says, is responding to Stephen Tyler. He says, conservative MPs should force a vote on the speaker if the liberals defend him, then there you go. I don't know that defend him is the right term, but it, se- it seems like he's going to be the scapegoat. You're the, he's the guy who did this. He's the responsible party, right? Karina Gould says the speaker has now made it clear that he was responsible for inviting this individual to the house. The government played no role. It did not know he would be there. The prime minister did not meet him. I'm deeply troubled that this happened. I urge MPs to avoid politicizing this incident. Senator Husaka says an international incident that happened on your watch, your boss apologizes for actions from decades and even 150 years ago in which your government played no role, but you don't think that this should offer an apology, that they sh- that he should offer an apology for this? It's not politicizing to want answers and accountability. It's true. It's true. Pierre Polyev comes out talking about this. He says, it's come out today that Justin Trudeau personally met with an honored veteran of the 14th Waffen Grandier Division of the SS, a Nazi division. The liberals then arranged for this Nazi veteran to be recognized on the floor of the house of commons during the visit of the ukrainian president this is an appalling error in judgment on the the part of justin trudeau whose personal protocol office is responsible for arranging and vetting all guests and programming for state visits of this kind no parliamentarians other than justin trudeau had the opportunity to vet this individual's past before he was introduced and honored on the floor of the house of commons without warning or context it was impossible for any parliamentarian in the room other than Mr. Trudeau, to know of this dark past. Mr. Trudeau must personally apologize and avoid passing the blame to others, as he always does. And friends of Simon uh, Wise, Cent- Wise Central Center, I'm saying it all terribly wrong, um, is appalled that they're, they're appalled that Canada's parliament gave a standing ovation to a Ukrainian veteran who served in a Nazi military unit during the Second World War implicated in the mass murder of Jews and others, right? So that's pretty terrible. Resident Connect says, a true opposition would have walked out of that chamber. Remember when EU MEPs walked out during Trudeau's speech? That's a real opposition. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that there was um, no one who walked out at all. And here is Jagmeet Singh talking about this, but this is what I wanted to show you, and it should have been earlier. But this is a joint parliament event and it's got i don't know when it was handed out but it's got yorslav hunka as the parliamentary event title and it's got the date on it and it's got business attire so presumably they would have known what was going on a day or so ahead of time to know what to wear and the rest right and so dr Virginia J. Johnson says to all those gullible Canadian establishment supporters who think that certain members of the 338 MPs did not know, this is proof that they all did know. So if you're, if you don't get this guy sprung on you, but in fact have a dress code and his name, right? Maybe somebody somewhere Googles him. Maybe somebody's staff Googles him. You know, is there anything special about this guy? Google him. Does he do anything weird? Is he, you know, does he review um, frozen pizzas on YouTube or whatever? Like, give me something to talk about with him, right? I'm the leader of the opposition here. I want to be, you know, witty or something. Like, right? Nobody, nobody looked up his name. When did they get this? Hours before? Minutes before? Like, oh, by the way, dress in business attire. This is two minutes before this event. Right, 1 p.m. February 22nd, 2023. It says business attire in the bottom left of the of the invitation, and the person's name. That's still enough, right? Like, that's still enough. Leader of the opposition, I think. Right? It's not. It's not too far. Um, it's not too far to expect that you would know something about the person. 
anything, something. Melissa Lansman said the reports of this individual's history are very troubling. The liberal government should explain why he was invited and honored. Zelensky joins Canadian Ovation for Veteran who fought with Nazis. And we've, we've kind of seen that. But if you wanted the link, there it is. Mark Miller, who's a, a liberal MP, is attacking Pierre Polyev for his stance on this whole debacle. And it is a debacle. There's a sharp difference between getting to the bottom of an unacceptable incident and using it to fundraise by spreading venomous falsehoods. We won't take this bait of falsehood, Mr. Polyev. So they're inverting this and trying to create a, a problem, a, a conflict, like a wrestling conflict, right? Like, I can't believe you'd say that. I'm going to be so much better than you, blah, blah, blah. It's a wrestling conflict, right? And so they're trying to create a conflict over this issue that they themselves caused. And that's annoying because they always do it it's all it's kind of predictable right it's it's pretty wild um and just accusing mr polyev of, of falsehoods and and trying to politicize this whole thing this is a political event it happened in the house of commons it's embarrassing and people want accountability and that's not something you can just uh, shame polyev until people forget although people do forget we forgot unbelievable amount of things Jagmeet Singh says, I share the concerns raised about Friday's event in the House of Commons. We must all stand against anti-Semitism. This must never happen again. Please read my full statement. And the statement is, I share the concerns about the individual honored with a standing ovation in the House of Commons on Friday. He was not a guest of the NDP, and we were not aware of his background or association with the Nazi regime in World War II. This event has caused more harm to the Jewish community, and for that, I'm sorry. New Democrats will be raising our concerns about how this was allowed to happen with the government directly. We must all stand together against the rising tide of anti-Semitism. They must stand together against the rising tide of anti-Semitism. But hold on a second. We're not quite done clapping for this Nazi here, right? Jeepers creepers. Everybody stand up. Unbelievable. Does anybody know who this guy is? I don't know. We're all just standing, so just don't question it. Just stand up. These are the people you want leading you? Come on, really? I mean, there was a time where Canadians would have walked out. There was a time where Canadians would have shown up for that crap, even with Zelensky there. Just Zelensky himself would have been enough. And Pierre Polyev, he could have made a statement by turning his back on him, right? He could have been like, Zelensky, negotiate peace, turn around, boom, done, right? But like, nobody's going to do that because that's ooh, international incident, right? Like accusing India of murder. I'm pretty sure India killed a guy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable and stupid. Okay, Viva Fry is getting in on this. He says, it's fun watching all the Canadian MPs who gleefully cheer, cheered a Nazi soldier now jumping ship and blaming Justin Trudeau. Actually, they're blaming Rhoda. Now, ironically saying, we didn't know. Thank you for confirming that you don't know about the regime that you are currently supporting with our tax dollars for as long as it takes. You just red-pilled a country and possibly the world and you, you corrupt dummies. Yeah, I think that's pretty true. Dan Albus says he was tending to a personal matter and wasn't in attendance on Friday's address. However, Michael is correct. An apology is not sufficient for bringing this controversy to par Parliament. For Canadians that are rightfully upset to see this, Prime Minister Trudeau must for once make himself accountable. And uh, do you think that's going to happen? And Mark Gerritsen is getting in on this. He says, sure, Dan, the only thing worse than what happened are people who are trying to exploit it for political gain. But just keep doing you. Um, no, what happened is way worse. What happened is way worse. We want accountability from our idiot politicians who are, who have weaseled and snaked their way into power and they're weaseling and snaking their way to stay there. GM says, not General Motors, but GM Forbes says, looks like Trudeau will skip question period tomorrow. Did something happen this weekend that he wants to avoid questions about? So yeah, no Trudeau in the House of Commons today for question period because reasons. Hmm. Um, and Neely, Dr. Neely, crazy eyes Neely, you must wear a mask in all, in all situations, Neely, says, tonight Yom Kippur begins. Before that, Canadian Jews would like to hear from Justin Trudeau, who has unequivocally said that our government stands against anti-Semitism to explain why a man who fought for a Nazi SS division was given a standing ovation by MPs. Um, and Watcher says Trudeau's effed over this. Maybe, maybe not, because what he's going to do is he's going to say the um, Speaker of the House is to blame for this. He's got an independent office. He's not in the Liberal Party because he's the independent Speaker of the House, and it was his fault and his fault alone, and I didn't meet with him, or maybe I did, but it was just for a second, and we trusted the Speaker's vetting, and if we find out that he didn't do the sufficient vetting, then we'll fire him. But, you know, people make mistakes. Whoopsie, whoopsie doodle. Ha, ha, ha. Moving on. That's what he's going to 
if he comes out and apologizes, it'll be a non-apology apology. It'll be a, it was his fault, not my fault, but I'm sorry you all feel bad. Like that's what's going to happen, unfortunately. And so Dr. Neely wants an apology. If the left and the right are agreeing that this was a stupid move by Trudeau, then, um, well, ushering in Pierre Polyev to be the the next leader of Canada, right? It seems all too convenient. And and the scandals really, honestly, keep piling up. Like 2023, scandals just off the top of my head. China's interference in, in Canadian elections, which is a huge scandal in and of itself and has not even started. No investigation, nothing started. We got a special rapporteur for a little while, which cost us a ton of money and got nothing done. Um, and what else? Um, the India thing. We're pretty sure India killed the guy. Justin, dude, right? Like, dude, bad move, bad move terrible, awful diplomacy and not how you do diplomacy. And then right on the heels of that is this, right? Like, honestly, making Canada look absolutely terrible. And those are just the headline gaffes. There have been many more gaffes that fill out the show. Golden Pup says, I've done some digging on this old Nazi. Um, There's just some highlights here. He was aligned with Nazi Germany, um, and reports are that he participated in the burning of villages and killing of civilians suspected of aiding partisans. He was implicated in the murder of Polish citizens in the regions of the, in different regions, and there was an estimate over a thousand civilians killed. He came to Canada and concealed his SS membership when while entering, um, and in the 2000s, several historians pressured the Canadian government to strip citizenship from former members implicated in war crimes, but the efforts were unsuccessful. So Canada has known about this and, and the residents here for a very long time, and they don't do anything about it. Um, Maybe no political will, just no political will to unearth all of this, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, invite him to the House of Commons and give him a standing ovation. Weird, weird, right? I think here is Carl and he says, this is where Canada is right now. Canadians need a public apology from Justin Trudeau and Christia Freeland from the speaker, Anthony Rota, and he needs to resign and he says you've been, you've again embarrassed all of Canada, uh, embarrassed Canada, and what's polling in or what's trending in Canada? SS Nazi and Freeland and Trudeau and Zelensky. So yeah, the uh, SS Nazi is more more tweets for the SS Nazi than Freeland and Trudeau and Zelensky combined. So that's interesting as well to note. Ezra Levent says. You led the cheering for an SS Nazi officer in Parliament on Friday. You held a scarf for a Nazi leader, Stefan Bandera. Your grandfather was a Nazi who stole a newspaper from a Jew and turned it into a hate machine, and you hid that fact. Maybe sit this one out for a line. (laughs) Christia Freeland says, Wishing Jewish communities in University Rosedale and across Canada observing Yom Kippur, an easy and meaningful fast. Gmar, I don't know, something Tova. So she's, she's saying, you know, happy Yom Kippur. Do you remember the Atone phone? I remember Stephen Colbert had celebrated Yom Kippur because Stuart was Jewish and Stuart would call or would call Colbert on the atone phone and like atone for sins of the last year or whatever, right? And so I thought I thought that bit was funny. But yeah, that's what Yom Kippur is. It's one of the very, very holy days of the Jewish calendar. Um, and it's a little gauche to, on Friday, you know, celebrate a Nazi. And then on Sunday say, oh, happy Yom Kippur, happy Yom Kippur, happy day of atonement, I guess, whatever it is. Justin Trudeau gets in on the uh, well-wishing for Yom Kippur. Um, He says, a day of reflection, repentance, and renewal. Yom Kippur marks the end of 10 days of awe that began with Rosh Hashanah to Jewish communities who are coming together tonight. And he says the the same phrase there that I'm not going to butcher because I I messed it up the first time. And Watcher says, uh, applause as... Applause a Nazi as a hero one day and virtue signal to the Jews the next, right? Justin Trudeau is genuinely the most moronic piece of garbage in Western politics who has no business being anywhere near levels of power. And it seems, so this kind of tone deafness is, is almost not human to the degree of like you have a Twitter account and you preload the Twitter account with like your Yom Kippur tweet. He's probably got his Christmas tweet and and New Year's tweet and um, Easter tweet already loaded if he's doing any of those this year. They just kind of do that and it runs automatically almost. It's a second thought, but it's, it gives the appearance of, of like a sock account almost where Justin Trudeau is not really responding to the reality of the situation, but is just playing the politics of the day because 
that's what's required of him in his position to continue to play the politics of the day. The individual scandals don't matter as long as he stays in power and he'll just keep kind of papering over the scandals of the day to continue putting out these cookie cutter, you know, I'm a politician that, you know, 30% of people like, and that's enough, you know, welcome to Canada. It's, it's a very, it seems very impersonal. It seems very out of touch with reality, out of touch with actually being somebody who is of the people. It's, it's a very, it feels like he's a puppet more and more. And it things like that, and Freeland too, you know, things like Happy Yom, Yom Kippur, and all of the people who are tweeting like Cam Guthrie, the mayors of the towns and things, um, they're tweeting like, oh, it's it's uh, puppy day or, or hot dog day or, you know, people who like flapjack day or whatever. All of these people who are not serious, like not taking seriously the immigration that's having an impact on the price of housing. Every day they put out nonsense crap like that is the day they're not actually genuinely trying to start solving the problem. And you can't solve the problem by building more houses. It's not going to work because they're screwing with the number of people coming in. You can't bring in a million people and build 100,000 houses and have it work out okay. It's not going to work out okay. And the, the longer they stall with these garbage social media posts that make it seem like the government is running tickety-boo, like just regular normal stuff, it's a lie. It's a, it, and it's a purposeful falsehood. They're trying to distract us by pretending that everything's okay while you are being robbed blind. And it's not even that blind. Like you can see them loading their getaway vehicle and you're like, what's going on over there? And they're like, don't look at that. It's forbidden to look at that. This, there's a robbery going on. I mean, we're stopping a robbery. Right? It's like you've shown, and I've used this example before, but it's like you've shown up at the bank robbery, you're the police, and you've met another officer at the front of the, of the bank robbery, and you're like, how do things look? And the officer says, things are great, we're, we're arresting the guys down there. And you're like, oh, okay, great, should I go down there? And, and they say, nah, don't worry about it. We've got it all handled, just stand up here and, and control the perimeter, right? And then, all of a sudden, that guy's working with the bank robbers, and he's stalling the cops, right? That's what it feels like. We are being stalled in order for them to finish the heist. That's what's happening in Canada and the West. Josh Alexander is weighing in on this as well. He says, one of these veterans is a Nazi who fought, for, fought against the Allies. The other is a Canadian hero from the Airborne Regiment who was just beaten and then thrown in jail. The Canadian Parliament just applauded one of these veterans. Which one do you think it was? It was the Nazi one. All right, so that's where we're at. That's where we're at in Canada. Things aren't great. We, things have definitely been better and, and international diplomacy has definitely been better too. I've had situations where it's been much better, right? Um, Inside Paper is reporting this. Um, so, so, so the whole Nazi thing, I don't know how that's going to end. It seems like it would be enough to drop the government. In normal times, it would drop the government, but we are not in normal times. I think that we are actually actively, we, we have people who are actively working against our country in charge of our country. So I don't know how to deal with that. But how can Canada responds to this situation remains to be seen. People seem angry, but will it be angry enough? I don't know. Moving on. Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions, and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.